<laughs> you were lying for the nation to see. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Gaston's Writer's Workshop live right here on The Voice 17104.com. Again, every Friday evening, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Again, if you'd like to be a guest uh, during this broadcast, we encourage you to reach out to Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Gadsden. Again, his phone number is on the top of the video, or just send us a message in the comments section of tonight's video. So tonight, uh, in celebration of Women's History Month, we've got a lot of great uh, spoken word artists, and we're going to be uh, joined by the Youth of the True program. So a great program on the way next, right here on Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Gadsden's Writer's Word Shop Live. So uh, Dr. Gadsden's coming in the building now. So I'm going to decrease so he can increase at this time. Ladies All and right. gentlemen, boys and girls, we present to some, introduce to others, Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Gadsden. Welcome All back. All right. Sir. Thank you, Brother Chris. Let me put my, mic, my uh, camera straight here. There we go. And welcome, everyone, to the Writer's Words. I'm always glad to have you as a viewer of this program. And welcome to those of you who are writers or those of you who just want to come and you know, be a part of the program. Uh, we hope that you will, uh, you know, aspire to be a writer. I think all of us have something to say. And one of the things we've always said about the Writer's Workshop, this is a great way to find your voice and to exercise your voice to be heard, okay? And we want you to use your creative juices, your investigative juices, all of those things that come into play uh, as writers. So anyhow, this is what we do. Hey, we started back in 1977 with this uh, concept called the Writer's Word Shop. And uh, we found out that there were other groups out there called Word Shop. And so uh, the suggestion was made, why don't you, hey, here's Ralph, why don't we um, call it Nathaniel Gaston's Writer's Word Shop? So that's how the city name came about. Ro, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, good to see you tonight. You Thanks too. so much for coming on. We had a good time out there in uh, Stilton, Pennsylvania, yes, last uh, Saturday, I think it was, uh, yeah, for the nice. uh, African American uh, uh, book. What was it called? African American reading, reading, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the lady who was the feature, uh, she was a relationship to Martin Luther King. Is that correct? Uh, no, Andrew Young. It was Andrew Young's daughter. Oh, I thought she said. Uh, I've been telling everybody Martin Luther King. So it's Andrew Young's uh, daughter. You know, this is daughter. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Paula, Paula Young Shelton. Wow. Okay. I missed that completely because I got there just a little bit as she was already doing her, you know, presentation. And I heard her mention King. So I just automatically, you know, yeah, thought she that she was like their, their families were all close. Yes, they were. Absolutely. In yeah. fact, I got a chance to meet uh, Andrew Young and go to one of his workshops when he was talking about doing some things in Africa and I always admired yeah. him. A great man, you know. And so that yeah, was good to know. Okay, we'll talk more about that. Brother Neil, how you doing, man? How you doing, Nate? All yeah. right, man. Bro, good. Yeah. Your voice sounds good, but your picture's kind of frozen. It's kind of yeah. oh yeah. 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 yeah, they're like bobbing up and down and uh, okay. Let me yeah. uh let me refresh, leave out, come back. Okay, real good. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear, but your your picture's frozen, so okay, real good. So anyhow, Ro, they had a great turnout with that. It was put on by the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they, they really did it up nicely. I got to give it to them. There we go. Thank you, yeah. brother. Chris, Chris is on it. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> he does a great job of that. So the 25th annual African-American read-in and the legacy of the civil rights movement, uh, which is said, let me put my glasses on here now, a soaring to greater heights featured author and book uh, Child of the Civil Rights Movement by Paula Young Shelton. Isn't that something? Andrew Young's daughter. Go ahead. You I got a chance to talk to her, didn't you, Ro? Yeah, our tables were right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about uh, her presentation, you know, for people that didn't hear her and meet her. Tell us a little bit about, you know, about, well, about her. She's, a, she's an elementary school teacher. She, she oh. told the story of being at school and they had a... Um, Black history program. Uh -huh. And she said one of the teachers had come to her to ask her if she would be willing to do something for Black History Month. And that's how, you know, the whole issue of her book started. And oh, she started this program in her elementary school and wrote this book. 
And now every year she heads up the Black History program with her book. Fantastic. And yeah. it's, it's a really good book. I mean, she really covered and mm -hmm. captured the civil mm -hmm. rights movement, you know, for young people, you know, good stuff. Yeah. And, and I like the presentation of showing the book on the screen while she read it and talked about it. So you saw the pictures and the word, mm -hmm. you know, all that. Well done. Now, was that her husband with her? Or I yeah, saw some it films? was. Okay. He, 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 I can't exactly remember what they said he did, but I know he had his own room and he was doing a presentation with the kids too, but oh. I can't remember okay. what the topic was. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, I was impressed with, uh, Neil, we're talking about the African-American, uh, reading that the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority here in Harrisburg puts on every year and it's the 25th annual. And, and so they had a massive turnout and uh, all kinds of African-American books for children from all over. I mean, they had a nice spread of books, uh, Ro. Mm -hmm. but not, not seen, I, I hadn't seen 90% of those books I had never you know, been introduced to. So yeah, well done, well done. And uh, they selected Stilton. That's interesting that they do it down in Stilton. It's a nice venue, you know. But uh, man, I had to park so far away and walk. I, I was like, <laughs> oh, I know. I get there early because I. Um, and you were able to park in the back. Yeah, I parked like uh, right around the 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 side, and I didn't have too far to walk. Well, I did, man. I, 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 was I, just making, I started just going to just fall on the ground and give up, you know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm like, someone come out here and carry me the rest of the way. <laughs> Man, you know you're out of shape when you start huffing and puffing, just walking. <laughs> that was deep. But well done, AKA. Well done, well, good stuff, good stuff. So what's going on, Neil? What's going on in your neck of the woods, man? Nothing much, Nate. Just been um, laying low, and that's why I haven't done much of any writing. I've just been doing other other business ventures. Yeah, well, you've been doing you've done so many great writings at this point. You can take a little hiatus and then come on back into the groove, you know. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Ro, thank you so much for hosting last week. Appreciate oh, that. You're welcome. You're yes, welcome. indeed. Yeah, my wife and was how is our, our illustrious Mrs. Gadsden doing? Yeah, she actually came home today around three o'clock. Great. Uh, great. She, she was in there for 10 days, and believe me, she didn't get no rest no, because you they had to do so much, there. you know. Yeah, so she's home. She has, uh, you know, some procedures. It's going to be, it's a different world, but, you know, we're, we're, we're blessed and thankful. Well, yes, good. I'm you. glad she's home. Tell yeah. her yeah, for yeah. her, and I'm glad she's doing better. Oh, I am too. She she still thinks she's in the hospital, you know, everybody telling the nurses what to do. I guess I'm the nurse now, so, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be, <laughs> it goes from a honey-do list to just do it, man. <laughs> Well, let me know if you if you need some more time and you'd like me to host. Just let me know. I appreciate that absolutely, and that that may happen too. That may happen. Yes, indeed. You know, that tonight we're going to have uh, at eight o'clock. The young people will join us again from uh, the PAL program. Oh, and, good. Uh, yeah, you know, it's the first Friday of every month, and the uh, the name of that program is called True, and it's a tobacco education prevention kind of thing for young people. You know. And so, um, yeah, Neil, you're, you're, yeah, you're really moving. It's messing up again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. You're having you a my picture, then your picture. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Wow. It <laughs> may be the weather. I wonder if you're, you're getting hit by that weather. It's yeah, it must be something. Let me, let me try again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really, really acting up out there. Yeah, it's it. like a green stop light. Yeah, didn't show my picture half the time. Uh, yeah, you know? it did. Yeah, and I know I'm not in North Carolina. <laughs> I'm right here. Yeah, but anyhow, yeah, man, I know it's, it's, it's talking about some, you know, weather coming through here. And man, they just show parts of California and other parts of the country. Sheesh. You know, well, I say it's a good weekend to stay home and write. Yeah, there you go. Well, we've been blessed in this area. Let's be honest about it. We've been really blessed uh, to not have that kind of weather, you know, coming at us. Bro, what are you working on these days? You have a new project you're working on? Well, my big focus, of course, is uh, my literary buddy um, Maria Chow. Oh, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been we knee deep into our rehearsals now, so we're rehearsing on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Gamut. Uh, 
but we just had one two this week. Yeah, and the cast is really starting to solidify. There, you know how you you start off something and you know that it's going to be good based upon how the cast receives it. Sure. So this week it was like, wow, they they have got it. So now it's just a matter of memorization mm-hmm. and blocking and like tweaking performances. But yeah. I'm I'm really excited about this. So am I. I think it's going to be excellent. I know it's going to be excellent, you know, because I know Maria, she's really, everything she's ever done, I've always mm-hmm. held out in mm-hmm. high regard. I mean, she's done a great job at it. And then you have tremendous uh, success as well as a um, playwright and also as director. And that's a good combination. Thank and you. And then also, uh, what is her name? Um, she's over since she's been in college. Janet Bixler. I am yeah. really enjoying dirt working with Janet. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's the production manager. Yeah, yeah, she's good people. I, I like her yeah. style, the way she does things. Yeah. We're having a good time. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I um what was I gonna tell you? Uh yeah, but anyhow, we're looking forward. That's May the fourth through the seventh. Is that right? At Gamma Theater. Yes. Um actually it's May the fourth through the tenth, but the ninth and the tenth are going to be school performances for the elementary and uh, middle and high school. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Elementary, would, would you think this, this uh, play will be? Uh, well, yeah, well? They, they are actually going to have, uh, because I had spoken to the uh, headmaster over at um, St. Stephen's, uh-huh. probably for their upper grades, like fifth and sixth. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought, you know, that might yeah, be. No, I don't mean like the little, little kids. No. I know. I was going to say, the first graders would be sitting there like, what are we doing? Yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Just the upper middle school. Yeah. That's and good, though. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I love the fact that young people are exposed to theater. I remember how impressed I was when we were, you know, kids in school. And like you said, fifth and sixth grade is a good age. And then you get exposed to it. I was hooked as soon as, you know, so mm-hmm. I mean, like, hey, I like this. And um, that's great. So, um, Good. So, folks, you know, look forward to it. It's called Hair Story. Yes, Hair Story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And it's gonna, it will be here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, Gamut Theater, okay, which is a really nice theater. There There's the cast. Yeah, there's the cast. Wow. Go ahead. I saw this on Facebook. Nice. Appreciate that, Chris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know some of the people there? I don't know if you can tell us a little bit about it. I know Steve. Steve Ross, he's very good. Yeah, he really is. He has a, a lot of theater under his belt. Yes, um, there's several that are are really not new to theater, and there's some newbies who are just like uh-huh. picking it up and flying with it. Um, down at the corner, at the right hand corner, is Sharon Williams. We've known each other for years. She's oh, yeah. mm-hmm. a teacher. She's a retired teacher. Okay. Um, Let's see who else do I know. Lou, you remember Lou, don't you? Lou Kirkland. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You know, I sure do. I need to get my other glasses here because believe me, these bad boys here are not working. I picked up the wrong set. I can't even read those names. Go on and tell us who's on there and I'll get my glasses. I'll be right back. (laughs) Okay. Um, I'll go back to to, uh, the up to the the top. We have uh, Shiona Alcatara. Uh, She is very young, but amazing. Um, She's been in one other play. And then there's Steve Ross, who, like I said before, has several plays under his belt. And then we have Josh Shelby. Uh, he's also acted before. Um, fortunately, Regilyn is no longer part of the show. She had some other projects she needed to work on. And then the, th- the second row, we have Lou Kirkland, who was used to come to the Writer's Workshop. She's an amazing poet. Uh, Giovanni Lewis is also someone who has acted before. She's uh, used to go to Day Springs. So I've known her for quite some time. And then there's Zara McCullers, who is also a new new actress and she's just budding and growing in her, um, her part. Kia Perry is, I think she has done some acting before. And then Samia Terry down at the, the bottom row. Um, this is her first play. Adrian, Adrian Tolman, I, I think she works at Central Penn. I think um, Janet uh, had introduced her to the part of being in this production. So she works at Central Penn. And Kevin Williams, he actually does a couple of different things. I think he does something in comedy, something with, um, 
like a comedy act. I'm not exactly mm-hmm. sure, but I know he he has done a couple of different things. And then I share it with you. I've known Sharon for years. She is a retired school teacher, and I worked with her at um, Thomas Thomas. Uh, what is it, Thomas? Holtzman. Yes, Tom, I haven't been there in so long. I couldn't remember. <laughs> the yes, Thomas Holtzman. Mm-hmm. It's, an, it's an amazing cast. I'm really enjoying them, and yeah, the is. opportunity to watch people who have never acted you know, grab a mm-hmm. piece and then make it their own. Yeah, I was really glad to see that Lou Kirkland was able to get a spot. She uh, came down to um, a program we had at the State Museum, I think back in January. And she mm-hmm. told me that she was going to try out and everything. And she looked great and, you know, looked like she was yeah. really ready to get out there. And I said, go ahead, Lou. And so I was glad to see that she followed through and, you know, was able to get that part. Good for her. Good for all yeah. of them. Good, yeah. You know, great yeah. cast. Yeah, I'm congratulations, so folks. Our neat group of people to work with. Yeah. And, you know, and I understand also the process of writing, by the way, that um, Maria actually interviewed people and then wrote poetry based on yeah, the images. She did. She did. Mm-hmm. That's the um, kind of the process that she's been taking with this piece and along with the one that she did earlier. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Reclaim My Time is that she actually interviews people. Like the first one had to do with the civil rights movement. And she Mm -hmm. interviewed women who lived through the civil rights movement and then created poetry pieces for them and streamed them together to create one complete story. So she's done that with this piece, Hair Story, where I think every Black woman has a hair story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's taken these hair stories and created a, uh, a, a, I say, a masterpiece of a story. And Mm -hmm. it's based upon um, one woman who is suffering from some her oh, I don't want to give away the plot. So her own hair issues. And mm-hmm. she she travels along, learns about the ancestors, learns about other women's hair stories, mm-hmm. and comes to realize, hey, mm-hmm. okay, I've yeah. sort of figured out my own path. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's a really great story. And I'm 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 just honored and privileged to be able to be a part. And I said to Maria, I said, the most exciting thing is that you now get to see the words that you wrote jump off of a page in in the hearts and the minds and the mouths of other people. Mm -hmm. That's excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. So we're going to be looking out for that. Hats off to Maria Chow. I know she was there at the African American reading as well. And Mm -hmm. that's off to all the parents who brought their children uh, to that, to expose them to the wonderful authors that were gathered there uh, I saw Floyd Stokes, I saw uh, Emery Cook, and then going down the line, then Maria wrote, uh, wrote. So many great authors were there, and it was just a, a you know, fun thing to do. And so uh, now the natural progression is to go to the theater, and we're going to yeah, go see yeah. Air Story in May. By the way, there's a wonderful play coming to uh, the Hershey Theater, and uh, oh man, just that quick. I just, no, wait a minute, I'm actually in the middle of the paper here. But anyhow, uh, before I go to that, let me pick up the latest issue of the Black Wall Street. Oh, I haven't and, seen it yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Roe Brady has a couple pieces in here, and it's a really nice uh, layout, you know. And so, uh, yes, indeed, Roe has the elegant centurion, and also uh, paying homage to Women's History Month, Harrisburg's History Making Women by Roe Brady. And so you have a nice little spread here, page and everything. So, you know. I don't have to go indeed. get the copy. Um, yes, indeed. The poem yes, is indeed. dedicated to Mrs. Mrs. Hetty Simmons Young. Hetty Simmons, uh, yeah. yeah. In, in fact, I uh, kind of stumbled on it. I was uh, up at the uh, Peachtree Restaurant, and I just happened to look over. They have uh, like an ATM, and right on top of the ATM were these papers. And I said, oh, you know, and I realized it was the March issue. So, you know, and uh, yeah. And so anyhow, we go and um, I do a little, it's a small little paper, but it actually that is chock full of a lot of great information and it gives us an opportunity to write. So hats off to the Dallas family, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and then they have uh, this wonderful spread on the back page that talks about, let me see, get it right there, uh, what's happening down in York at the uh, Appel uh, Center for the Performing Arts. And it says spring 2023 highlights. And there's some great things coming up here. Shante for one. And then also they're going to have comedy, jazz in the city, Jesus Christ Superstar, a brother named Earl David Reed in York County's own. Brother must be able to sing. The Madagascar, the musical, 
and all that kind of stuff. So good stuff going on. Anyhow, pick up a copy of the free paper, and it's called Black Wall Street of Pennsylvania, okay? And uh, Ro and I both uh, write articles for it and have a lot of fun doing so. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Good stuff. Um, yeah, so anyhow, that is out, folks, and we hope that you will take advantage of it. This is Writer's Workshop, uh, uh, you know, way. Uh, we have a couple of things coming up. Uh, in April, of course, we have the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, you know, Poetry Month. And so we'll be honoring uh, poets all throughout uh, the month of April. And I've been asked to write a featured uh, poem for a local magazine, which I need to make sure I, uh, I do that. And then also, uh, you know, we have Women's History Month upon us right now. And so we are going to honor Women's History Month by uh, featuring some dynamic women even tonight. Uh, here on the Writer's Workshop. I've asked Brother Chris to pull up some videos. And so at this time, I'm going to ask him if he'll bring up the first video of the night. It's like 725. And we're going to feature uh, a dynamic uh, voice of a female poet, spoken word artist. And uh, whenever you're ready, Brother Chris, and here we go. The other day, a young lady, brown as the melanin in my daughter's eyes, said behind a mic that she hated being a woman. She wanted to know what it meant to be one. I've often wondered the same. Looked around for the teaching of such- Can you turn it up just a little bit, Chris? We all learn to be by imitation or indoctrination. Mama and media can't help but train tutor us into carbon copies of themselves so then knowing who we are or what we should be is really understanding whose costumes we wear on most days whose skeletons we switch with when adam took his nap i was told a woman was independent autonomous that she needed not a man or moon to keep her in orbit that she moved about as wind and breeze live without needing permission to interrupt all that is still and under restraint I was told a woman cannot truly be herself, that is, if herself was not light enough, dark enough, if her hair is no Rapunzel replica, or if it be too underground railroad for those cotton acting men to stomach. I was told that my body is neither belonging of me nor its beauty innate, but that I am not gorgeous unless told by another woman's son to be so. When did the mouth of men in whose image women are not made in begin to damage us so silently? Maybe it was when we began believing the voices that have no deity in it. I was told a woman should not submit, should not be meek, that that type of behavior was only for women who treated their voice like a secret. I was told not to be a secret, but a siren, to be as machete as I can and honor my opinions at the expense of respect. While some men may believe themselves to have liberty over a woman's body as taught how to destroy as only depravity could predict, we have equally learned how to tear and rip and undo dignity with a mere sentence or squint. It's called strong by society. They tell us that's what a backbone looks like. But beautiful is the spine that remembers where it came from. That lets its knowing of self not be determined by every wind of doctrine and dust, but God himself. We must unlearn the deep misunderstandings that compose themselves as empowerment, as freedom. Liberation has never come by way of unbelief. Eve did not attain life by finding beauty in lies, but only a naked body and a husband that forgot her first name. We women must be smarter, must be wiser, must be bent on loving truth. No matter how contradicting it is to a dying culture, I tell you, a woman is no fool unless she chooses to be if you ask me what is a woman I would tell you that she is a bone made alive with distinctions that set her apart as does the difference between a firefly and a new poem a woman is not a man her calling is not a synonym of inferiority her distinctions are not the child of patriarchy. They come from a creative God. Did you see his fingerprints in your hips? The whistling shadow of his mind when your body became home to another name that called you mommy where all the gladness you forgot could exist. A woman submits to her God, her husband, her church. She is no weak-willed or brittle-backed woman, but only as strong as humility and faith may identify her to be. They say, submission sounds like servant. They say, that sounds like something to rebel against. I say, ain't it funny how being a servant is repulsive to everyone but God, and we wonder why we can't recognize his face if you ask me. 
If you ask me, what is a woman? I will tell you that she is a sister to all. Even those whose blood is not of the same roots, but who is still as kin as her mama's firstborn, and she treats these sisters like a wintered quilt, making sure her mouth does not unstitch that which was made to keep cold hearts warm. We are made up of nurture and everything comfortable, and that is why we feel so deep, why we cry so sudden, because the emotions that make us woman don't make us unstable, but turn us refuge to the chaos where our ribs once sat. We are necessary and nuanced at best. But a woman should be nothing more or less than what God made her to be if you asked me. What is a woman? I would tell you, ask the God who made her. Wow. Man. Yeah, Jackie Hill Perry is one of my faves. What's her name again? Jackie Hill Perry. Huh. Yeah, she has just such a wonderful testimony of her and her husband. Um, she started off uh, as um, kind of really struggling with a whole bunch of personal issues. Mm -hmm. um, she had told a story about being gay, mm -hmm. and about how god had just changed her life around and she ended up getting married i think i think her and her husband may may have more than one child i know when i i was introduced to her um she had just started to share her story and a lot of her poems were about you know this transformation that came through in her life and how god changed her her whole life and she was here not too long ago and unfortunately i wasn't able to go here in harrisburg go yeah she was she was actually I think she was in maryland okay yeah but i really want you know i've been following her for a while you know what i want you to uh yeah try to find some information on her i would like to reach out to her and see if we can get her here in harrisburg mm -hmm. uh that would be amazing i would love to uh you know bring her in just that piece alone you know drew me in um, yeah Good. I think I've actually heard her before, but I'm not exactly sure. But that that was yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, she she came just to um I think I want to say Maryland. Yeah, I think it was Maryland that and that was that might have been about a year ago because some friends of mine, we were all gonna drive down and then one friend got sick and we weren't able to go. But we, uh, where, we where is she coming from? Where does she live? Do you have I, I'm not sure exactly where she's yeah. from, but she I'm, I, now I know I think it was Maryland. Yeah, okay. it, it was over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just to be able to stay stand there and to deliver that piece with such power and to use the voice and her movement and, uh, you know, facial expressions, all of that. She just really nailed that piece, boy. Oof, but boy. it's really been a transformation. She she didn't look anything when she first when I was first introduced to her. She looked nothing like that. She, okay. she had very short hair, mm -hmm. um, wore very you know um, just plain clothes. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Go ahead, sis. Yeah, good stuff. That's a great beginning. And again, we're celebrating Women's History Month. Uh, by the way. We will have some young people from the True program coming on tonight. Uh, hopefully, they'll be joining us. We sent them the uh, information. The first Friday of every month, we hope to uh, have uh, you know young folks from that program come and uh, just be a part of the uh, conversation. Uh, and anyhow, we're going to also encourage them to write and to share their works. Uh, out of that, um, that particular program grew out of uh, an effort that used to be held by the Harrisburg Police Athletic League. And we've had some great voices come out of there. Janice Baldwin being one, who's now a senior in high school. And Janice is uh, doing great works, uh, you know, with her poetry. She uh, won the AXO competition locally last year and then went on and competed at the national level. Uh, she didn't win a medal, but she certainly uh, won the hearts and minds of the judges that they really enjoyed her. And uh, she's growing. And so she's also just won a few different local uh, contests here uh, with the, what was it? Um, oh, well, I can't think. But anyhow, St. Paul's Episcopal Church put on a program uh, for Black History Month at the Epsilon Jones, I think it was, um, you know, contest. And she was one of the winners for that. So anyhow, just a lot of good voices are coming out of uh, Harrisburg. And uh, we want to expose them to persons like that particular poet 
that we just saw. So that's what's going on. Hey, don't forget that in April, we'll be celebrating uh, Poetry Month. And that will be April the, I think it's the 16th. Let me make sure it's the mm -hmm. Sunday. And it will be, yes, 16th. That'll be the third Sunday of the month. And we hope to have it there at the State Museum of Pennsylvania, which is 300 North Street here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We always have a nice um, turnout, you know, vendors and wonderful programs lined up. We're hoping to do something for Women's History Month as well. Uh, we don't have the venue at the moment, but we will, uh, you know, nail down a venue and then do some things uh, locally. And hopefully people will be able to come and support that program, too. I'll tell you more about that as we uh, nail it down. Uh, but anyhow, that's what's going on here. Uh, pleased to say also that we're now taping again our Life Esteem television program. It comes on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. here in the Har greater Harrisburg area, uh, Central Pennsylvania. And uh, of course, we do tape them and we're, you know, hopefully going to have them up on Facebook for those of you who are not that early morning riser, which is a lot of you, <laughs> but we do have wonderful uh, viewership of the program and been on over 30 years uh, with this program called uh, Life of Steam. We interviewed some great people. Uh, this time we, around, we had a chance to interview George Hartwick, uh, County Commissioner of Dauphin County here in Harrisburg, and he was talking about mental health. Uh, we had a chance to in, in, uh, interview Chad Fry. And Chad Fry is with Messiah College, and he is up, uh, you know, a project that deals with neighboring. And our own Wendy Notre Onye, who happens to be an outstanding poet and writer, uh, you know, was uh, able to get, get involved with Messiah and do a uh, civil rights tour. In fact, just last weekend, she went down to, uh, to uh, Washington, D.C., to the African American Civil Rights Museum. And she, uh, you know, was able to tour that and go to with a, with a delegation from the Messiah, uh, uh, you know, organization that created a program that, you know, involves a lot of local African-American churches. And they went down and had a great time. And then she hosted um, a program on Thursday night called the Grio Collective. And was so uh, grateful, her to, grateful for her to do that. And then also we interviewed uh, Dave Smith. And Dave Smith is an uh, outstanding uh you know, gentlemen here in this community is doing a lot of great work, works a lot with Christian Churches United, and they do a, a, a Sunday a service uh, for persons who are incarcerated. And uh, they do the uh, work release centers, and they will come over and they, you know, do Bible study, have a local pastor come in, and it's just a great thing. He's a retired military man from the Navy, and also is an intellectual. He actually has, excuse me, got involved in a lot of uh, great issues of our time. And there's a great resource to talk about, like Bitcoins and what is that? Talk about uh, the uh, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, that's people now, you know, talking about being groundbreaking stuff. And he's on top of that kind of stuff. So we had some great interviews. Check out Life is Thing uh, TV program Sunday mornings on WHP TV 21, CBS affiliate, right here in Greater Harrisburg, PA. And you can also find the programs on uh, YouTube as well as you can find them on, uh, you know, Facebook, just go to Nate Nathaniel Gadsden. And uh, we have a lot of those programs there on Facebook. And these are programs that highlight people who are doing something. We're not there arguing about issues and talking about, you know, Murdoch or anybody like that. You know, no, we're talking about things that are getting done and that are beneficial to people in a very real sense. That's why we call it life. Really nice. Uh-huh, yeah. Ruby and I would like to talk to you po about possibly being on your show. That would be excellent. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get it done. And, you know, right here on this platform, you know, we have so many different uh, avenues. So, for example, on Thursday nights, we do the Griot Collective, and I'd love to get the two of you to come on, uh, you know, if Janet wants to join us as well, uh, to talk great. about the yeah. upcoming production. Say it again. I said, that would be great, yeah. Let's make it happen. Let's just pick out a date, Thursday nights, okay, from 8 to 9. And uh, let's, let's, oh, build, let's that, that's up. the only problem that but you said Thursday nights. Yeah, I'm looking at our March cal uh, calendar right now for rehearsal. Uh, we have Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursdays rehearsals from 6 30 to 8 30. Oh, so oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what we can do then. We'll we'll block off some time here at the Writers Workshop on a Friday night. Y'all come on out. Let's let's, oh, some, let's okay. dedicate some time to hair story. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and then we'll take it, you know, push it out all over the place. Let's do that, okay? Thank great, you. Great, cool. I will. I will let both Janet and Maria know. 
Yeah, Super yeah, you can write a workshop night. Just, just, just get a date. Yeah, yeah. Good. here from seven to nine. So we have plenty of time to talk about it, you know? Yeah, that's good. That's good. So the Jeremy writings, uh, you know, Neil didn't join us back. I wonder if he uh, just got oh. hammered down there with the, uh, le- you know, electrical impulses running through the universe and all that kind of good stuff. Because it looked like that's what was happening. It was. I know, it's raining here too. Oh, it is raining there? Oh, oh, it rain in here? Okay. Yeah, I'm not. It was raining, but it's, it's getting harder. I know it's supposed to. I can hear it. Hear oh, it. Okay. it like it's, it's picking up some speed. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah well, I tell you, people have been hammered all over the country. No matter where you are, folks, uh, you know, we hope that you're safe and that you're indoors. And I uh, hope that this program is going to be uplifting to you. Ro is going to, uh, Ro, look like you have something you want to share with us tonight? Oh, this is my calendar. Yeah, but I, oh, okay. I do. I do. Um, oh. I'll read the poem that was just published for the Black Wall Street. For yes, I saw it. Day. Please read that. Yeah. Uh-huh. I thought I'd share that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, her memories sit me. in a room. Her memories sit in a room like antique furniture with beautifully polished surfaces, the varnish casting rich shades of mahogany bliss and splendor like tarnished silver regally serving everyday folks. Mm. Memories are like that, you see. They find their places amongst pressed flowers and old Bibles, yellow newspaper clippings and mama's best Sunday go to go to meet in church hats. She told the the young people about her days of history-making moments and her sweet lover. She sits now, wisdom seeping from her pores like honey from the rock, her bones telling stories like Jeremiah, who had fire locked down in his own wayward soul. The pages of, of time are gently lifted from the book where life's most valued moments have been written in the indelible ink of pain, hardship, and places of unspeakable joy. This life you see has been well spent, lived to overflowing abundancy, placed in the hands of her sweet Jesus, fully anointed and called blessed, dedicated to Miss Nettie Simmons Love, Harrisburg's beloved centurion. Beautiful. That's well done. Yeah. And for those who don't know, uh, Hetty Love, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about Hetty Love? Oh, well, by the way, let's say hello to Nan Swanson. Nanette, how you doing? Oh, hey, hey Nanette. Hey. <laughs> All right. Nanette, I really want to thank you, too, by the way, for participating once again in our uh, program in which we honored, you know, five families and five individuals. Very and nice. Yeah. was spot on. Very well done. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very well. Done. I want to know how's Pat. She's home. Uh, you know, she just came home today at uh, about three o'clock. Oh. And uh, you know, she was in there for over 10 days and wow. a lot of issues going on. And so uh, you know, she's blessed to be home. Okay. And the journey begins. <laughs> okay. The journey begins, yeah. So, but thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I'm praying for her. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yes, now, uh, Ro, you were telling us about uh, Miss Hetty Simmons Love. Yeah, I wanted to pull up her bio so I had all the correct facts. Mm-hmm. Um, Hetty Simmons Love is the first African American to earn a Master's of Business Administration degree from the Walton Wharton School of U- of the University of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. She was born in Jacksonville, Florida, in 1922. Hetty Simmons Love attended Fisk University and graduated in 1943. So uh, when I was at St. Stephen, she was just uh, celebrating her birthday in grand fashion. Uh, she was down at the Martin Luther King Center reading to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And she was over at the um, the downtown library and she had shared the book that was written for her, mm-hmm. written about her. And she's just, I mean, to be a hundred years old, she's such an elegant lady. Uh-huh. You, know, you know how I'm just, uh, I love people who, you know, have lived to see so many things in history. Uh-huh. So getting to talk to her was yeah. like an honor for me. It's just like, wow. I got to know her and the family, uh, her daughter, Karen, who was mm-hmm. pretty much her caretaker, went yeah. to Westchester State College and she was a year behind me. So we got to know each other very well. And I got a chance to visit their home way back in the day. Of course, got to know her husband uh, and Karen's father, Dr. George Love who was a uh, top administrator for 
Harrisburg School District. And um, they used to live in, where did they live? Was it Turkey? Or they lived overseas for a couple of years. I thought and it was Turkey. I, I think, think so wrong. too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but anyhow, they, they're a very distinguished family. And their brother, he lives in Florida. He was mm -hmm. up here when they honored the mother for uh, doing AXO, when we had the AXO uh, presentation. Uh, what do you call it? The ceremony, you know, mm -hmm. at the Whitaker Center. He came up with his wife. And, uh, you know, yeah. So, like you said, an eloquent family, great history, you know, and who, who knew she would live to be 100 no. and still going strong. Yeah. yeah. Still going strong. And fine is well, just clear as a bell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's a very bright, very bright person. So, great. thanks for sharing that, though. But anyhow, once again, uh, Ro did do a feature on her in the latest issue of Black Wall Street, Ooh, of Pennsylvania. Okay. And so if you get a chance to, you know, find the paper, I wish they would put in the paper where you could actually find the paper, you know, <laughs> different locations. <laughs> I happened to see this over at the Peachtree Restaurant, oh. but also, and it was right inside the door as you walk in over the top of the uh, ATM machine, but also they have them at Front Street Diner. I see them there. They have them at the Rose Family Cleaners on, um, what is that? That's Second Street. So yeah, you, you know, they're all around. You just gotta find them, that's all. Yeah, okay. Yes, indeed. Yellow bird down near the um the bookstore has them too. Okay. Cafe. At, least they, at least they did have them. Uh-huh. Okay. Very good. A remind everybody, this is the writer's workshop. We come in every Friday night from seven until nine. And tonight, uh every first Friday of the month, we we are joined by some of the young folks who will be coming on probably around eight o'clock, I was told. Uh, thanks to Angela Bates, uh, Lillian Bates, her mother, and also um, oh, uh, Daphne McCoy, who is uh, LaShawn McCoy's mother, the great football player. And uh, by, by the way, I noticed that LaShawn McCoy is featured on one of those local sports talk shows, not local, a sports talk show that has national, you know, uh, implication series on the national sports program. Uh, really doing well. Uh, fantastic. And they're building buildings run right here in Harrisburg and also one in Philadelphia, as far as I know. Mm. Uh, take some structures and, you know, building, doing great stuff. I like to see when these uh, football players, in particular, any kind of athlete, gives back to the community. Right. That's what uh, he's doing, along with his uh, brother, who also played in the NFL for a number of years. A lot of people don't know that. And then also his mother, who was heading up the foundation, uh, the you know, the McCoy Foundation. Good stuff, folks. Thank you. And don't forget, too, that we have one of the premier Harlem Globetrotters right here in Harrisburg, who's giving back big time. And that's Chris Franklin. And Chris, by the way, at one point was, and I don't know if he still is, the point person for the Harlem Globetrotter. So if they were gonna go to any country, anywhere in the world, Chris would go first and set everything up, help to set everything up. And then he was also the featured, uh, you know, Meadow Lark Lemon used to be the featured guy in the middle there. That's what Chris does, uh, you know, that N1 that he does so well. This is amazing, Harrisburg's loaded. And then you don't have to mention the Dallas Cowboys and Parsons. You yeah. know, Michael Parsons. Come on now. And, yeah. you know, don't forget the great Dennis Green he used to be a coach in the NFL. He coached uh, two teams, I believe. Uh, it was the Arizona team and also Minnesota Vikings. And he graduated from John Harris High School. Uh, Charles Dudley played 15 years in the NBA, NBA and won an, uh, the NBA title under Al Adels back in 1972, I think it was. Uh, we can go on and on and on. What about Jim Jones? I was going to say the great Jimmy Jones is still walking <laughs> around here doing great stuff. He went to Canada and won the Great Cup, which is like the Super Bowl in football up there in Canada. And he was, uh, of course, the top quarterback in the, in the country in high school and then also in college at U University of Southern California. He used to actually hand off to O.J. Simpson, do the ball to Lynn Swan, uh, and, and hand off also to uh, Sam Bam Cunningham. All these are three... Uh, you know, Hall of Famers. And he's is, a very humble person. Very humble guy. Yeah, <laughs> does a lot of work for the Harrisburg Police Athletic League even today. And he's a pastor, minister, you know, and everything. Jimmy's just a great guy. So, yeah, the Harrisburg, and that, you know, I can go on and on, but, you know, Kenny Watson, we tend to forget, he played a number of years in the NFL and did very well with uh, the Washington Redskins. And then uh, the young man who played behind uh, oh, he went to Cincinnati, looking right at him, too. And he played for the Harrisburg High, and then he went on to play in the pros, and he was a defensive back, all all, all, all uh, 
NFL defensive back. Um, come on. Anyhow, played for the Baltimore Ravens. And then Hank Poteek played for Pittsburgh Steelers and, you know, on down the line. We've had some, Ricky Waters. I just saw him on Facebook. Ricky Waters is, uh, should be in the Hall of Fame. He's been mm-hmm. robbed for years. And his numbers are much better than most of the players that ever played in the game. And somehow they've figured out a way to keep this guy out of the Hall of Fame. I don't get it. It's just ridiculous, you know. My but, nephew, uh, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike. Michael Parsons. No, Simpson. Oh. Paper, Virginia. Tech, I guess. It, I think it's, but then he got hurt. So he oh. could, he's okay. a, he's a, the head of rebirth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of guys. I mean, I remember way back in the day, a guy named Dennis Stewart, folks, who played basketball for uh, Still High. And he was the best basketball player to come out of, out of this state for the longest time. Uh, you know, we used to watch him. He was a few years in front of me. I played for William Penn. He played for Stilton. Uh, he was just a monster. And he went to uh, what, Michigan, and he held the record up there for years. And then the Cassie Russell broke his record. And then someone found him broke Cassie Russell's record. But, I mean, Dennis Stewart was the man. He, he, could, he could hoop. Uh, you know, and then you could score down the line. So many people. So, And then we're not leaving out the women because, you know, uh, <laughs> by the way, a lot of people don't know. But one of the teachers for Harrisburg School District for years had a world record in track and field. And I think she's still teaching there. And she was one of my favorite runners. Uh, I watched her. Uh, oh, what's her name? They just had her on Facebook. They were featuring her. Uh, but she actually had a world record, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in like the 100-yard dash, 60-yard dash, whatever it was. But, uh, yeah, you know, come on now. <laughs> yes, indeedy. <laughs> so it's all good. It's all good. So anyhow. Uh, these are the kind of things, though, I would challenge us to write about. You know, I still am waiting for someone to write the story of the Scott White family to really write the story <laughs> <laughs> and to talk about the great work and the just the uh, incredible family they've been in terms of gospel music. You know, yeah, that story should be told. Yeah, well, I know Jade was working on it. Um, I don't know where she got stopped or what, but Jade, about Jade the poet. Huh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she had a lot of physical ailments, but she's a great writer, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a project we might want to look at taking up. That uh, someone really needs to tell that story, and that's a national story. That's a that's the kind of story that needs to get national prominence. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, really, truly, yeah. I would love to see that happen. Uh, I actually think that Floyd Stokes ought to get national prominence too. He's hit every stayed in the in the United States. Uh, he's promoted, you know, reading all over the country. Uh, he's done a great job. And, uh, you mm-hmm. know, so many things he's done. Would, that'd be a tremendous story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's always been so supportive of me. So he bought a book when I was there at the uh-huh. African American Reading. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what yeah, you got? You know. <laughs> That's my yeah, buddy. He's, yeah, he's good boy, my buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, some people, you know, but hey, you know, it is what it is. And sometimes you just got to push, you know, and, and just make it happen. So hopefully one day that story will be told, to his story will be told, along with Scott Weiss and so many others. Jimmy Jones, he's, he actually had two documentaries that featured him. They were on like HBO and Showtime. And the one was about Bear Bryant. And half of the video was about Jimmy Jones <laughs> because mm-hmm. Bear Bryant took a chance on, on desegregating uh, Southern football. And the way they did it was he decided to play USC in Alabama. Mm-hmm. USC went down there and beat him like 35 to 10, just demolished him. And Jimmy Jones was the quarterback uh, for that team. And then, and then after that, all the teams started getting a black ball player. Next thing <laughs> you know, look at him now. You just go to the Southern ball and that's all you see is brothers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> amazing, amazing stuff. But those are the kind of things that we don't write about them, who will. And uh, and also if they tell, they whoever they may be, tell the story. They never tell our story the way we would tell our story. And so we got to be clear about that, you know, tell the story from our perspective. To that point, real quickly, and I'll jump off of it. Jimmy came down with the Police Athletic League kids. We had some 40 young people there. He drove the bus down. And Miss Lillian also drove down the van. And so I was telling them about this great quarterback and blah, blah, blah from Harrisburg High. And we were there at the um, uh, Midtown Scholar Bookstore. And I asked them if they ever heard of the person. They were like, no. And I'm looking at Jimmy Jones. He's standing right there in front of him. And he's driving the bus, but they never heard of him, right? 
What? He told a story, but then I started telling a little bit of a story, but then he corrected me and he told me stuff that I never heard. I didn't know, you know. So we don't always know. And to get it right from the person is an incredible thing. So yeah. I hope that one day he will actually do write his own story because he has some inside stuff that I was like, wow, man, I had no idea, you know, because we regurgitate that to what we hear, we read, but he can tell the real deal. So in that same way, Scott White, I wish they would sit down and really just talk about all the different things that happened and, you know, and how you, you know, came together and solidified and, and became such a force around here. Does yeah, any, we got honored. We got honored last uh, Sunday with uh, James Lyle. Oh yeah, I saw that. And we I did. We sang, and I mean, uh, it just brought back feelings because we ain't sang in a while. And yeah. you know, mm -hmm. some of them said, "I want to start singing again, Mama. I want to sing or whatever." Yeah. But should have, you know, yeah, because we haven't been singing in there. And 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 Carolyn referenced to the younger ones, you know, starting, you know, a revolution or whatever. <laughs> Uh -huh. get started so yeah it was very good I it'd be really it. nice to sit down you sung with um uh shirley caesar is that correct no that's suella suella sang with shirley caesar she sang with shirley caesar who, who did you you backed up somebody I, sa I, oh, I sang with mr bill buck i sang with uh marguerite flemings and i sang with um tilly spencer oh right yeah uh, do you remember you know, mr bill buck Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah he, he, he did a couple programs for us. In fact, we did a writer's workshop at the Feller building at 301 uh, Market Street. Mm -hmm. He was one of the people that we featured along with the Hodge family out of Carlisle. And, uh, and we were talking about black history. And Mr. Buck said, I want to show you a picture. And in the picture, he was a little kid standing there in front of the Feller building, 301 Market Street. At that time, it was a dirt road. Oh. Okay, this is on Market Street now. It was he was holding uh, the reins of a horse. Mm -hmm. He was just a little seven or eight year old kid, and he's standing there holding his reins. That the horse was, you know, that. And he's yeah. standing there, and you would not believe that, that was Harrisburg or Market Street. <laughs> and wow. he's standing there. And at that time, he was, I guess, in his nineties or whatever. But he could still sing. You yeah, know, could still sing. old man uh, River. Oh my <laughs> goodness! Yeah. Song. <laughs> and to think that someone so telling his story would be a tremendous feat because this him telling his story was like wow out of sight you know but yeah so anyhow but good stuff good stuff good stuff so let's uh we lost uh neil owens today neil's a great uh, novelist and he's out of north carolina but uh you know again there's some storms moving through and i have a sneaky suspicion that his camera kept going out based on you know the weather and things that he was experiencing because he's never had problems before but uh, we've been blessed in this area. And so thank God for it. Thank God for the, the light winter that we've had thus far. Oh, my goodness. We've been so blessed. Oh, we've been blessed. Man, oh, man. Now, the people who love snow, they don't see it as a blessing. But we do. <laughs> I do, mm. you know. Yes, indeed. I think we're blessed enough to have some really nice programs coming up. And I, I mentioned this stuff before. Before we go on any further, though, because I know the young people are going to join us in a few minutes here, hopefully. I did. I know they're working on the project too, uh, but they are supposed to join us. Anyhow, I'm going to ask Brother Chris if he'll pull up the second video for the night. We just had an outstanding one. Say the lady's name again, uh, Ro, that you, the featured uh, spoken word artist we just listened to. Oh, Jackie Perry Hill. Jackie Perry Hill. Okay. Uh -huh. And my my charge to Ro is to help me find out how to get that woman near the Ashburn. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we got to get her in here. I had another person approach me about Amanda Gorman, and they were asking. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I would yeah. love to get both of those great people to come through this way, you know? So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, the whole Harrisburg need to turn out. That's right. <laughs> turn out because they're just, and that that uh, hill, Perry Hill, she, ooh, I really like her. But uh, Amanda Gorman, yeah, she'd be a tremendous draw. And I think all of us, not just young people, all of us would benefit from her. Uh, her scholarship, you know, she's, mm. she's very good, very thoughtful. So, okay. Uh, Brother Chris, if you don't mind, put up the second video for the night. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, oh. please it. welcome Ernestine Johnson. Not the average black girl. 
because I'm so well-spoken, poised, full of etiquette, a white man's token. You know, I remember my ex's mother telling me I didn't know how I was going to react when he brought home a black girl, but I like you because you talk so white. Mm. Well, when did me talking right equate to me talking white? They say I'm not the average black girl. No, 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 not the average black girl because the pigment of my skin is just a shade lighter than that black girl over there. You know the black girl over there, the black girl with the nappy hair, the black girls whose elbows can't skip a day without lotion, whose hearts and heads are filled up with self-hate and bottled up emotion. The cocoa brown girls who have to face society every day and be tough, because no matter how good they straighten their hair, their good is still not good enough. Oh, see, luckily for me, see, I don't fall in that category. See, they say I'm not the average black girl because I speak with so much class, and I'll have too much, but just enough ass, and not too much, but just enough pizzazz. You know, just, just a little bit of attitude. Because you don't want to come off as one of those average black girls and come off as rude. You know, popping their gum and shaking their neck. Yeah, because those black girls get, like, no respect. But see, luckily for me, see, I get a pass. Because the melanin in my skin matches that brown paper bag. And my father, brother, and men that I date pants don't sag. And when I speak, my tongue pronounces every syllable. And the combed part down the middle of my hair is naturally visible. Oh, oh, it must be a weave, but she must be mixed. Because we all know the average black girl ain't got that good or when I walk into a room full of white men, they all stare. It must be the long lens of my unaverage black girl hair. See, see, they say I'm not the average black girl because I corrected the professor when he used the word conversate. Converse. The word is converse. And in case you didn't get the memo, there are now eight, not nine planets in the universe. And when you're watching the numbers on your stocks move up and down, remember Oklahoma and a small town where one of the first Wall Streets was a black Wall Street that got mysteriously burned down? Oh, they say I'm not the average black girl. Well, let's flip the script and rewind this shit, repaint the lines that had been blurred over time because the average black girl that I know, see, the average black girl that I know made 19 trips through the Underground Railroad to free the slaves sat on segregated buses, refused to get up and pave new waves. See, the average black girl that I know, the average black girl that I know were Egyptian queens like Hatshepsut and Nidocris who were ruling dynasties and whole armies of men. Excuse me why I set fire to this poem on my pen because I am tired. Tired of the stereotypes black girls have fallen into because of American mentality. Oh, but not half as tired as Ella Baker, Diane Nash, Septima points that Clark, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired, Miss Fannie Lou Hamer. Daisy Bates, Anna Arnold Hedgeman, and Dorothy Height are far more tired than I am. But do you think the ones who say I'm not the average black girl even give a damn? No. So pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliments. Pardon me if I can't openly accept your compliment. It's just the average black girl that I know. The average black girl that I know had courage that surpassed her every fear and fought for justice and equality year after year. So as I construct these words, pardon me as I shed a tear because I'm not half the black girl she was. I am not half the black girl she was. See, there's a minor clause. See, she was out there fighting, breaking, and changing laws. So I bow down to my black queen standing in the merit of her work. And as America's society continuously throws these supercilious words unto me, I say no. I'm not the average black girl. I can only aspire to be. Thank you. <laughs> that was on our Sydney the Hall show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Yeah, that was our Hall was a while back. Yeah, no question. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, you know, one of the things I, I really, you know, he's our Sydney Hall, he's a comedian a little bit, but he really did do some groundbreaking stuff he had on Farrakhan, which, of course, canceled the show. That mm -hmm. sister is a prime example of the kind of stuff that he was able to bring. Where else are you going to see that? You mm -hmm. know? I mean, really, back in the day, too? Jeez. Right. Unbelievable. <laughs> this stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Is that on the, our screen? Oh, okay. That was me. Okay. There, there we go. I had a, a hand that was up over and that's face that was meant my little uh, my little thing i thought that was something else i'm like wait where's that hand coming from <laughs> anyhow yeah so hey nate good. i did i did print out the axel uh, uh information good. good so good. i will be available if you need me uh, oh definitely did you get the uh so you got the um I email that over. i sent out yeah okay did you get the email I sent out today yeah Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And Ro, did you get it, uh, receive it as well? But it said March the 25th. Yeah, March the 25th is the actual, uh, yeah. Yeah, and we'll, we have rehearsal from 10 to 1230 that day. 
Oh, no, I canceled that. Forget about it. Don't even worry about it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure Maria and Janet would. <laughs> They'll be just fine. <laughs> what kind yeah, of rehearsal? Uh, what kind of rehearsal? For Maria Chow's um, choreo poem, Hair Story. Oh. I, I looked at that, and then I wasn't, oh. when I saw my email, and I thought, oh, I don't think I'm, because I wasn't sure we uh-huh. had changed the rehearsal schedule. And then I looked at the revised rehearsal schedule. We'll actually have rehearsals from 10 to 1230 that day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't want to commit if I couldn't do it. And Absolutely. No, no question about the it. One project that this this next couple of months I, I got to commit to. No, you better. Yeah, because this we're looking forward to that so don't even worry about it I, you know and I get it there are a lot of people who I, who I would think uh I see where Kamika Williams Witherspoon is doing mm-hmm. tremendous stuff down in Philly there she has uh she always kicks it you know but she puts she's put on a couple of plays as well mm-hmm. and everything so I know people get busy I mean that's that's who you are that's what we, that's who we are right we busy folk yeah, I won't make the play thing. I won't make the oh, play because right. I'll be I'll be on a cruise. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh. cruise that day. Oh, it's in May, going? right? You, yeah. May, May the 4th through the 10th, I thought you said uh, wrong, right? May, yeah. May the 4th really through the 7th because the yeah. 9th and the 10th are, are uh, school performances. Oh, that's right. Sure, sure, sure. You did say that yeah. earlier. So where are you going on the cruise? Um, it's a nine-day cruise uh, leaving out of uh, New Jersey. Um, Bermuda, Hades. Uh, oh, my God. Um what else? <laughs> it's it's uh, Dominic Republic, uh, play, nice. to, uh, play to something. <laughs> yeah, that's great stuff. I had it. Yeah, my one son, he just came back from a nine-day cruise. He, he said they had a fabulous time. And they went great. to Haiti and some other places, you know, that stuff. Yeah, weather was good. Everything was great. Yeah, but we've done that a couple times. We, we Pat and I, you know, were able to make that cruise. It's yeah, a great cruise. A That's a great it. cruise. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. You're going to the Royal Caribbean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great one. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, enjoy. You know, enjoy. I plan to. <laughs> All right. I know you do. <laughs> now, that's in May, right? Yes. But you May are available to the for 13th. the 13th. Huh? May 4th to the 13th. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, by the way, we mentioned AXO. For those persons who never heard of it, it's the NAACP Afro Academic Cultural Technological Scientific Olympics. It's been around since 1978. We have a local competition. And then the folks who, uh, the young people, ninth grade through 12th grade, who qualify with a gold medal can go to the national competition. This year, from my understanding, the national competition will be in Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, hats off to the director, uh, which is uh, Kaba Brunson. Kaba is now, he had been for years, and then he um, was replaced there for a few years. But now he's back as being the state director of Pennsylvania, not just Harrisburg. So he heads up uh, the delegation that comes out of Philadelphia uh, and other parts of Pennsylvania. And believe me, uh, you know, Philly brings it too. They, they, come, they come prepared to get mm-hmm. all those medals that they've got won over the years. But last year we brought home three, uh, two medals, uh, a, a gold and a bronze, and then also a ten thousand dollar winner of the essay contest wow. with uh, Nipita Nyong'o. If you have not seen what AXO is all about, please go to uh, NAACP AXO Harrisburg and spelled A C T S O, just like it sounds. Uh, NAACP AXO Harrisburg and look at that wonderful website that's up. And also you can see the categories and all that, you know, different things all about AXO, what it's about. It's a major league um, undertaking. And last year we had, and this year we will have it as well from our understanding, is that we had a um, our celebration, the award ceremony was at the Whitaker Center. And the Whitaker Center stepped up and, and made that available to, uh, to AXO. By the way, on Channel 27, they're running commercials about AXO and it's really first class. I have to give I've seen questions. that, yeah. It's yeah, nice. very nice. Yes, very nicely done. And then also when we go away, uh, they stay in first first class hotels. Uh, the kids get a chance to uh, see young people, some 800 other young people from around the country who are all competing and all they all bring it. They're all gold medal winners. So, you know, you, you best better believe <laughs> that there's going to be some competition there. 
And for Madison Stokes to win that gold medal in medicine last year was just electrifying. Mm. They said from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Madison Stokes, man, we went crazy. Uh, yeah. Pat almost lost it. I mean, it's like, I'm like, you okay? She she really, <laughs> you know, got into it. And then when they mentioned uh, the young lady from uh, Milton Hershey, who won the, uh, okay, this is Angela Bates. Let me see some. This is the uh, act, the kids here. Let me see real quick. Okay. Hello, Angela. How you doing? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, more on. Yeah, I sent you the uh I sent it to your phone, uh the information. Thanks a lot. Okay, appreciate it. Okay. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me just say to Brother Chris, who is uh, you know, controls everything. The uh people from um the young people were trying to get on. They said they were in the waiting room and they never got on. So if you could let them on, they're going to come back in, Brother Chris. I sent her all of the information. Hopefully she uh, put it in right. You know, maybe you didn't see her or maybe she came to the wrong area, but she said she was on. So uh, they're looking to come back on in a couple minutes, in a minute here. So, uh, yeah. So anyhow, but AXO is really a great uh, ground. And one of the things that uh, I want to do between now and March the 25th is give the young folks who are participating in poetry, uh, written or spoken, uh, oratory, uh, you know, play, write, and essay, all those, you know, areas that we involve words, uh, if they want to reach out to the writer's workshop, uh, persons who will not be judging. So I know, Ro, you won't be available to be um, a judge, but maybe you could help out somebody, you know, who just wants to, yeah, there she goes, okay, hey, all right, who maybe just wants a little bit of uh, tweaking on their project or look it over. And sure, I could do that. Okay, excellent, excellent. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. A few people I know will not be able to come on, but if they can help out, that would be great. Hey, listen, the true folks are on. Young people from the true. There you go. Yeah, okay. That's good, man. Uh, hey, how y'all doing? Okay. You're out of focus a little bit right now, but I know you're there. <laughs> The ones who are closest, we can see. I think there's Lillian standing up in the back there. And uh, yeah, I'll just sit it down so that everybody can hear you, though. Okay. And can I have an opportunity to read one of her poems tonight? Oh, yes. Oh, well, you love to hear from them. Absolutely. Anybody, any of the young okay. folks want to read something? Yes. Yeah. Does any of the other young people want to read or share? Just one poem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she said just one poem. Here's oh, my buddy, Tiana. She can do two. Hi, Miss Ro, how are you doing? Good, it's so glad to see you here. Good to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I like her poetry, by the way. She shared one of her okay. poems with me, and I'm like, hey, really good stuff. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's great. So listen, uh, you have one tonight. You have Ro Braddy. You also have Nanette Swanson. And myself, and we're, uh, you know, representing the Writers' Workshop. I'm so glad you joined us. And uh, whoever's going to read for us tonight, the floor is yours. Okay, you ready? I don't know. I have so just, much. Just pick one. one. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Lauren says that one. Okay. okay. I've read this one to Mr. Gadsden. He said he really liked it. It made me happy. Sure so I'll read that one. Okay. Um, All right. So this is an original poem I wrote myself. It's called, um, What Does It Mean to Be Black? Um, I just shortened it, the title. It's just says, To Be Black. Um, so it says, well, what does it mean to be black? I answer with a sigh. Then I pick my head up and I catch them by surprise. It's more than just my skin, my hair, my lips, my eyes. It's more than just my diligence. It's my heart, my kindness, and my thighs. It's more than just my patience to listen to your lies. It's more than just my laugh. It's more than how I walk. There's more to life than being black. So listen when I talk. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. And I especially like the piece that said, so listen when I talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You At one part, you kind of faded out. It's just, the, you know, the sound there. But uh, yeah, good stuff. So tell us a little bit about the poem. What prompted you to write that? Um, it Good and bad. So what prompted me to write that was in middle school, I was teased a lot. Um, my complexion, I do have a spacing between my teeth. It's a gap. Um, but between that and just, I think, uh, just being different, I think, and, you know, wanting to spread awareness to that. And when people ask you, like, oh, well, why is your skin so dark? And I'm like, well, I just read this, you know, I wrote this poem because of that. And I'm just like, now I can answer that question. 
I can answer that ignorance basically with this poem. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Well, we have a, a teacher here with us in the form of Ro Brad. I'm gonna turn it over to her. Ro, when you talk to young folks and Rose a writer, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but she's a novelist. She's written, tell it, why don't you introduce yourself, Ro, and then why don't you talk to the young folks and Nanette and I will, you know, well, chime in. Okay. Let's turn it over to the teacher. I've known Tiana for a little while now. Um, we first met over at Elementary Coffee, I guess. Gosh, that's been a few months ago. Um, Emily Han, who used to be uh, one of the administrators over at St. Stephen's, introduced me to Tiana. Mm -hmm. And she came down to see me do some poetry at Elementary Coffee. And she's just been, I mean, she shared some of her writing with me, but she's amazing. So I am so excited to have her um, come out tonight to Writer's Workshop. So I'm, I, she's amazing. That's all I can say. Fantastic. But I really encourage all the young people who are starting to write, just keep going. And don't let anybody discourage you. Don't, keep going. That's right, just write, just write, you know. Right. And by the way, you get better. You, as you write and just write and write, you, you get better. You'll get feedback. You'll, you know, you'll listen to other people. You'll read your own works and, you know, decide that, Maybe you have something else to say and all that kind of good stuff. Just keep writing, as Rose said. That's the best. Diana is a buddy novelist. She shared with me mm -hmm. um, her manuscript, and it's it's amazing. She just needs to keep going. Yeah. And I'd like to say to Tiana, I'd like to say to Tiana, I mean, that was great. That was really great. But I would slow down a little bit, and like you're looking into somebody's eyes, mm -hmm. just say that poem. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But just slow it down a little bit. Me be direct. Uh -huh. And then that brings up a good point. Uh, you know, your words are, and your poem is worthy of uh, of it being heard, right? And so, yeah, slow it down. Uh, you know, put emphasis where you want to make sure that the emphasis uh, belong. And uh, don't be afraid to be, you know, you don't want to be over dramatic, but be a little dramatic with it because you're driving home the point, you know? And so in today's society, uh, you know, we call it spoken word and people really want to hear it. So not only when we listen to Roe read or Nanette read or, you know, anybody actually, uh, you know, you read with power because you want to make sure that, they, that the hearer or the reader understands, you know, exactly not only what you were saying, but the kind of emotion that's involved with the piece as well. So you have some really good work. So whatever you do, uh, keep writing, and then yes. uh, when you read it, read it with power, okay? Power. <laughs> that always makes a lot, it makes a big difference. Let me ask a question real quick, and, and we can't see everybody, because like I said, I know you're doing it on the phone. Uh, what are you guys talking about with True these days? What, what topics are you covering? You know, what, what's going on? Okay. Paul, you want to tell them the story? You can say. Tell them the story. Uh, we did. She made a video to. to yeah, we, we can't hear. Just a little bit loud. Let's say it now, okay? Where uh, some of us ask questions and uh, India and Angie answered, answered the questions. One of the questions were. Uh, well, what is the difference between vaping and smoking? Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if we answered it, but we had a panel mm -hmm. um, of all the true leaders that were answering questions of people who were new in the true. Is that what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Can you introduce yourself? Uh, the young lady is speaking right now. Tell us who you are. Um, my name is India Smith. I'm a, oh, it's kind of blurry. My name is India Smith. I'm a senior at Bishop McDevitt. Um, I participated. Huh? And by the way, Indy, you're also a very good writer too. By the way, very good poet. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you for being here. And are you going to share anything tonight? Um, I can share something. I made this a while ago. I don't know where my head was at, but before you start reading, I'm going to ask Brother Chris if he'll come on real quick and hold on one second. Brother Chris, can you come on on screen real quick? You wow. mentioned something in your text here. You said something about uh, the blurry. Yes, I think uh, they have uh, on on the kids setting. Uh, it's one of the Zoom backgrounds. 
uh, and it's uh, for the blurred background. That's why the kids keep disappearing. So if you turn that off in the background, when they have a chance, or even next time, you won't have the issue that you're having with the kids like disappearing and blurring in and out. Oh, that's now that that's with uh, Angela. I don't know if you understand. Yes. What it's, it's, uh, can you do that, that Angela? Oh, 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 yeah, I can turn oh, oh, that's for my job. <laughs> 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 he says, blurred down. Blurred down. I didn't think about that. Challenge. Yeah, the blurred background settings on. So just turn that off and everything will clear up for you. Okay, let me just see. Let's see if she can get that done for okay. I know nothing about technology. I know nothing about it. I didn't even think yeah, about I'm that. Like, hey. Yes, ma'am. It'll be fine. Yeah, once you uncheck that, you'll be all right. Once I find it. And the process would be me finding it. That would be the. Uh, it should be under uh, your video setting under choose virtual background. And just uncheck it. Oh, wait. I know, but I'm on my phone. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, this for next time. For next time. Don't worry about it. For next time. Yeah, don't worry about it. We're good. We're good. We can hear you and see you. We're good. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. So let's get India back in here and see if she can read our piece. Just, if she can just read it loud, that'd be nice. Here, India. I just want to read it loud. Here, I'll, I'll just put it on you. Okay. I'll just wait. Okay. There you go. Ready? All right. This one is called Projection. A reflection of you and your past, your insecurities flustered on another, in a flash, a story is made, quickly divulging another's demise. Imagery brushed with a muck of color and resentment, its smell a laced about reek, this envious em energy admitted from a misunderstanding, because my experience is unknown to you. But you don't deserve this hostile projection of mine, nor do I deserve this harsh view of you and your innocent actions. So take my apologies. I'm trying my best so we can end this bitterness and so That's nice. That's nice. Very nice. Yeah. In fact, India, I think, won the uh, World Affairs Council uh, poetry and storytelling uh, piece. Didn't you not? India, didn't you win that contest with the World Affairs Council? Uh, yeah, I won first place in the World Affairs Council um, this February. Or yeah, January. very good. Yes, indeed. Congratulations. Yeah. And so, uh, okay, good stuff. Anybody else have anything, uh, Ro or, or Nanette? Any questions for the young folks there at True? No, not at this time. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I really like, uh, and I asked the question earlier, I said, what were you guys working on? I, I don't think we had quite heard, you know, I understand you're working on the project. Angela, you're muted right now. You can you hear us now, Nate? I hear you now, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So yeah, so uh oh, it looks clear now too. Okay. You must have done different, something right there. Okay. Different phone. <laughs> different phone, okay. So yeah, yeah, I was just asking, what are you guys working on? Can you tell us a little bit about True for the people who never heard of you? You're on Zoom right now, live, or on Facebook Live. Tell them, tell them the reason why you did the skit tonight, because you won a prize and they were asked you to do it again. So now we're going to be you know, exposed Feature. everywhere. We're going to be featured everywhere. Um, hello. <laughs> so uh, True is a tobacco <laughs> resistance Um, We are trying to help uh, Pennsylvania, uh, but especially Dalton County, uh, fighting tobacco and vape use. This or today, we filmed a video uh, trying to educate and promote uh, a lack of tobacco and vape use in the area. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, can you show us your Anybody shirt? Else oh, the show? I see you oh. have a sweatshirt on. Can you show us a sweatshirt? I do have a sweatshirt on. I just nice. got it today. Very cool. <laughs> So, and right. I have the, yeah. the short sleeve t-shirt. Oh, okay. Oh, you have different colors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. And we have one of our alumni. Tell them who you are. Oh, hi. My name is Elijah Dollar. Oh, hey. Miss Pearl. And she may not be able to hear you. You need to speak out louder. <laughs> I'm pretty far from you. Wait, do you want to say Can hi, you come up to the camera? Have him come up to the camera. First year student at Carnegie Mellon University. I'm going to throw a long die. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, Dylan, have your grandson come up to the camera here for a minute. Uh, 
Okay. Is it <laughs> oh, okay, it's flipped. All right. Wait a second. Okay. Yeah, if you can put it up to you. There you go. Oh, you are? Okay. Hi, my name is Elijah Dorado. I'm a first year student at Carnegie Mellon University. I'm a true alumni. Where, where do you live, by the way? You, you live someplace pretty unique. Tell us about it. Uh, I used to live over in Doha, Qatar, where the World Cup was hosted this year. Yep. And it's, it's a great place, extremely hot, but I love it, food especially. And where did you go to school over there? I went to a school called ACS, but I also then transitioned to a virtual school so that I could split my time in Harrisburg and also over in Qatar. What are you majoring in, by the way, in college? International relations and politics, and then I'm doing a dual major in ethics, history, and public policy, and a minor in cybersecurity and international conflict. Well, yeah. And how long have you been associated with True? Uh, it's been at least four years now, four or five years. Fantastic. Good for you, man. This yeah. is good stuff. I just want to make sure that the people who are watching this program understand the magnitude of the quality of young people that are involved, in, uh, and you represent the best of that, man, you know. We've all kind of watched you grow up under the leadership of your, your grandma, your aunt, and Miss Pearl sitting next to you. You've had some <laughs> dynamic people in your life there, and that's great stuff, you know, and, and you really represent well. So God bless you, man. Good Thank stuff. You. Thank you. Yeah, yes, indeed. And that thing to Pearl for a minute there, too. Miss Pearl. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Miss <laughs> Pearl's been trying to arrest me for years. You know, she's a former state trooper. <laughs> she's been hunting me down for you. <laughs> Chris I Pearl, have not you been doing that. I have <laughs> not. We work together and do family trainings, and he's like a brother from another mother. Right, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we fight like it too, boy. We fight. We know. do. We do. <laughs> and I'm trying to write a book. One of these oh, days, okay. I'm going to get it on paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to I'm do trying. That. You got to do that. I am absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And what you do? Um, I've probably been with it about the same. About um, I follow Lillian and Angela. So what? About four years, maybe off and on. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. That's great. Yeah, I like it because one of the things, the fact that they go out and do the speaking and that they're getting trained to be comfortable doing it. Because I think a lot of our youth and young adults um, have an issue with public speaking. And it's so really important, um, even in just doing your, when you go for an interview for a job or when you go for an interview at a school, mm -hmm. it's so important to be comfortable in what you're saying. So um, I think True is wonderful on many levels, but uh, it really does help. It gives the young people confidence yeah. And um, that's so important. Well, I'm going to add thank you. And uh, what I'm going to ask is I see we've been joined by another great writer, the Sail Power. How you doing, the Good. Good morning. Good night, right. everyone. Great, great. Here's what I'm going to ask us to do. I'm going to ask the, the oh, hey, this is the director, dear. How you doing, sir? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing real well. Doing real well. Doing a great Good job with you. this group. Want to introduce yourself? Oh, yes. My name is Eric Rothrow. I'm from the Harrisburg area YMCA. Um, a good part of my job is tobacco control, and that's what true comes from. Uh, the prevention part of our program is our tobacco resistance unit, and they've been great. They are our youth ambassadors, and they do um, a lot of peer-to-peer -peer education because kids hear, hear from me all the time. And it's much more powerful coming from someone their own age. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> I appreciate all the work you're doing. Thanks so much for, you know, being on tonight as well. And sure. uh, we look forward to this every Friday night. So one of the things we hope that will happen out of this is that we'll get more voices from your young people to write mm -hmm. and to, uh, you know, use this platform as a way of, you know, screenwriting and making their voices be heard. Um, yeah. One of the things I'm going to do ask to do tonight is I'm going to ask uh, Ro if she'll read something for, you know, so that they can hear it. Azale, will you bring out something as well? Okay. Uh, Nanette, did you have something that you can share tonight? Well, not a poem. Okay. But if you have something that you'd like to share, sing. Yeah, song, it's right? just a little song, so, yeah. But Dan, okay. Snowden, Dan Snowden's on too. Oh, Dan, I don't see Dan. Where's Dan? He's up there. Right here. Hey, Dan, the good, man. How you doing? I don't see you. Uh, Come on on the screen there, buddy. 
So we can oh, see yeah, well, this, well, this uh, you know, yeah, it's coming to you know what I mean? That, yeah. Okay. So also, I want the true uh, group, I want you to think of anything that you want to, uh, if you have another poem you want to share, or if you have something that you just want to talk about, say, we have about 35 minutes. And so uh, let's get some readings in here. And how many students we had tonight? We have about, what, four or five students? Five. 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 Good. Okay. Well, let me know who wants to read something tonight, okay? And uh, we'll share that as well. I did ask uh, Brother Chris to bring up some videos. We've seen two already. So before we do our little round robin, I'm going to oh, ask them to show this one more video. And then we're going to, we're just going to do some reading uh, tonight, okay? Yeah. All right, so let's do that. Um, Brother Chris, if you don't mind, if you could bring up a video that we can all see. All right. Am I black before beautiful? Black before brains, brains before beautiful. Beautiful before brains, black before a woman. Woman before a person, body before an image, image only, body only, only woman. No beauty, no brains, no color, no face, no image, no eyes, only body. No woman, no brains. A woman is only seen, not heard. Don't you know? Don't speak. Sit, sit quietly. That corner, in that corner over there. Hush, woman. Hush, child. Keep the sobs. Keep them muted in your throat. No one wants to hear all that pain. No one wants to hear you complain about how you're always the victim about how mommy had a bad habit of signing checks before she actually cashed them. No emotion, no heart, you have no soul, no depth. You are only body, you are only Saturday nights and drunk cab rides home, not the mornings after you are smeared lipstick, child. And shadows of thighs stilted on fishnets and smeared lipstick, always the one no one wants. You are only leftovers, you body of a woman. You have spilled yourself. Your cup runneth over, all you are is give and give and give and no take. But I was told that a woman was a million words more than just trying to speak herself into the skin of a man, of anyone. And you women, you are more than Saturday nights. You are butterfly. There is beauty cocoon inside your shell. And for all those who told you, your love will turn to ashes in your mouth. Tell them, tell them that you are made of bonfire. That the world mistakes you're burning for beauty. Women are given too much attention for their looks. Not enough credit for their intellect. And not to mention, it's getting hard to have to protect ourselves. Due to recent events, one has to be strapped whenever they enter an elevator or even in the safety of our own homes. We can be raped or seen through anything we wear. We can be given dishonorable discharges because of the textures of our hair. We can never be president because of the time of the month. But we give birth to your sons. We raise your heroes. We nurse your wounds. We cut the meals that you eat before you leave to conquer the world. And even when the world is burning, we still have the strength to cover your skins with the seams of our skirts. We have killed and cooked, burnt and bruised, sang and slaughtered, been hurt and abused. We have died a thousand deaths. We will not die anymore, we are done with death. And when men are oppressed, it is a tragedy. When women are oppressed, it is tradition. Us women, we are faith, we are time, we are roots, we are spine, us women, we are human. We are revolution, us sanctified, us happen, us love, us some good human, us happy, we happy with change. It is a constant baptism to remind us of our holy. We are looking to the sun, we are better than those things, we are better than everything we have done. Us women, we are worthy, we are beautiful. Us women, we are worthy. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm trying to click. <laughs> yeah. We're celebrating Women's History Month, and we've seen three dynamic videos tonight of women who just brought it. That was outstanding. Yeah. So, yeah. So, speaking of women who bring it, and, uh, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, some presentations now. And also, I'm going to start with the true folks. And also, Dan, I hope that you'll be willing to share something too. Do we have anybody from True that still wants to you know, lift up a piece right now? Yes, please do. Hmm?
you're muted right now. So once you're on mute, then we can. Uh... I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We're muted. Can I read another poem that yes, I wrote? Yes, please do. Yes. Mm -hmm. then, and then India. Okay. You want to read one? Okay. This one's a little bit more on the emotional side. Um, I wrote this at a very okay. emotional point in my life. Um, I was going through a lot. I just wanted to write it down and kind of like look back on it later and realize that I've grown from it. Um, that's why I wrote it. This one is called Pain. So what is pain? What's my pain? Is it irrelevant? Is it unnoticeable? If I smile, will it prevent the rain from pouring? If I laugh, will it prevent my heart from aching? I guess I don't know pain. I guess I'm too young to know pain. I guess it's not worth wasting my breath. I guess it's not as deep as they think it is. Maybe my pain can be very deeper than no one ever see. Maybe hiding my pain behind my smile isn't so bad after all. Maybe being the perfect daughter is the perfect distraction. They'll never see the pain hidden behind my smile. So for now, in order to cope, I guess I'll just keep on smiling. But what is pain if you can't express it? What is love if you can't feel it? What is hate if we can't forget it? And what is pain if I can't feel it? Yeah. Very nice. good. All right. Good stuff. A lot Thank of people you. can relate to that pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to ask the person now, uh, Lily, and if you had a camera, just get a little bit closer when they read so we can hear it. Just okay. A little bit yeah. I that was that good I the video okay. inspired me to, to project more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this poem is called Identity. Identity is a system of grouping that can be limited, but also framed. Inside this body of mind lies an identity. Defiant by definition, she's her own entity. Entity, Even with her prancy nouns, she doesn't fit. She's a mystery. No one can control this misfit. To reel her in is a task that won't last. Ignorant to the unpleasant masses, tugging at this perception of mind, the wormy contemporary. Y'all say I know her, yet she's freer than the free. So try again, my keeper. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good writings. Good writings. All right. So excellent. Excellent. We're going to keep it moving. I'm going to ask Ro if you don't mind reading a piece, Ro. Huh? Sure. Um I'll read something that I've, I've read a couple of times before, but I like this one. It's called Like When. Mm -hmm. I need to grab hold of everything that pushes me down and push back. Like when you walk into a room and they turn their heads, wondering if your melanin will make a stain on their interior. Like when... Mothers have pressed their oppressed beliefs into the pretty blonde heads of their baby girls. When they only want to dance and wear pretty dresses and carry their colorless teddy bears and hold onto their burden, burden, innocent minds. Like when you bring your wares to the table of opportunity, and you're told that your feet don't reach the floor, even when you sit up straight, so you slouch. Like when you see your pennies falling, but you're not, but not from heaven, becoming smaller each day as they become absorbed into a politically twisted society where old presidents incite injustice on Capitol Hills that cause us all to fall into in distressed valleys. Like when kids sit in classrooms forgetting that education comes with no cost, but costs them the pain of using dormant gray cells to keep out of jail cells. Like when the cost of living costs more than living itself and the steps of the poor are laden with the promises of good paying jobs that take them to the land of good living but only lead to the temple of despair and foreclosure. Like when we see the ending of a good thing, like black love, we cry a good cry and hold our words and never voicing the pain of jealousy, envy, and hate. 
Like when we feel like we have failed, never seeing that failure is nothing more than getting off the boat at the wrong dock. Where we sit watching both the tide and time roll away. These things make me feel like when. Yeah, just like, I like that one too, yes indeed. Yeah, like when. Appreciate you sharing that. I'm gonna to turn to uh, Lizelle, if you don't mind reading a piece and then we'll end, not end, we'll go next to, uh, to Nanette, what? then to uh, Dr. Snowden. Lizelle? You can go to, I could go a little after. Yeah, right now. Uh -huh. yeah. Sure. Um, not right now, somebody else. <laughs> okay, someone else, okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, did you wanna, I'll tell you what, we'll go with Dan, because I wanted Nanette to sing at the end mm -hmm. here. Dan, if mm -hmm. you'll do a piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, but I'll just let you know. Um, but the piece that I wanted to do, I, don't, I only have about maybe a couple of lines to go because this will be my 50-second poem and I really wanted to share it. Go ahead and share it. Okay, okay but I said it's not, I'll, I'll go as far, as far as I can, but it says, has a couple more lines to go, though. Oh, but I'll, if, I'll do it anyhow. If you don't want to do it tonight, it's just, okay. Do you want to finish it? Well, I, I can't, all I need are, I need are a couple of lines and, that, and I can, but I mean, I, I could actually do it now, but it's a big, because most of it is completed. Okay. Okay. It's my true life, my, it's my true life encounter with COVID. Because okay. I, I actually did get it one, at one time. Hmm. In early August of 22, I had an unfortunate incident. <clears throat> the culprit of this story is COVID, which I contracted quite by accident. The affair began harmlessly enough when I traveled out to San Diego, competing in my 15th transplant games with Team Philadelphia, always so. I took precautions prior to my flights, wearing masks and getting vaccinated, but the social distancing element on planes just could not be assimilated. My performance at the games went quite well. I earned two medals, one silver, one gold. COVID-19 was not in the picture, while I enjoyed time with friends, new and old. Yet, on my way back to Pennsylvania, I began feeling extremely fatigued. At first, I thought it, was just, it just might be jet lag, but I would soon learn the full truth indeed. Straight from the games, I had a work detail with an advisory board I manage. A field trip and meeting were in order, the participants to take advantage. The feelings of fatigue continued still while I endured the field trip and meeting. However, I, I soldiered on through it all, unaware of the forthcoming greeting. After all, the activities ended. I turned to my home um, for some sound rest. At this point, I really felt terrible, remarkably, remarkably far from being my best. I went to a Penn State facility for some testing located on the scene. The next day, I received my test results. Sadly, I learned I had COVID-19. A period of quarantine followed as I awaited my condition to end. Many of my colleagues and coworkers provided well wishes of bound to send. Although I was recovering at home, there was another matter to address. It involved contacting many persons to whom I may or may not have caused stress. Since COVID-19 is still contagious, it was, not, it was my obligation to act. All those to whom I may have exposed to a disease that is no joke, in fact. Fortunately, no one I reached out to came down with the dreaded COVID-19. Even so, my troubles were not over, as I still had to remain un as unseen. Once the quarantine period had passed, I returned to my workplace undeterred. COVID-19 may have kept me sidelined, yet I was able to come back preferred. And that, that's, and that's, that's where it, that's where it ends right now. I have, I have one more stanza to go, but um, you'll note that um, I worked, I went, got through the whole thing, and uh, it, it worked out for the better. So that's how I did recover. Fantastic, good for Praise you. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, and you say you're still trying to finish that, right? Okay. That's yeah, so only have, only have um, one stanza to go. Okay. All right. Good works. Good rhyming schemes, as always. And also, I like the way you just tell the story. You know, I could actually follow the whole progression 
No doubt. That's really good. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Uh, it looks like we lost Brazil. She, yeah, okay. Well, Nanette, oh, there she goes. Oh, there she goes. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just run to refer to that. Yeah, Dan, I right. think. Oh, she's yeah. coming. Oh, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let me just, yeah. All right, let me just say. Is, I was just finishing up what I was writing. So okay. it's just, okay. <laughs> it's called um, Open Every Door. Um, okay. Not because a door slams in your face, you take it. You stand there and take it. Pound it hard, not with your fists, but with words that can break it down. Pound it hard, let your respect be known. Pound it hard that the walls will tremble. It will run and scream your name. Pound it hard with words of substance till the crack on every wall responds to your call. The doors will open. Every stroke, every pound, every breath, every fire, every strength. Pound it with faith. Pounded with your words, pounded that the ancestors will smile in appreciation. The doors will open with the rays and the sun and everything that will come together to melt every fear. It will light your part. Pound it, just pound it. That our black hands will turn every doorknob. That when we walk in, we would shine. We would not stutter, but speak bold. We'll pound it hard till every dust rise and fall. All right. I see a change in you. <laughs> yeah. She spoke that. She, she read that. that boy. Good, <laughs> good piece. And you just wrote that today. Yeah. Good I was trying you. to finish it up. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Oh, well, Nanette, yeah. take it on home and... and, and you know, give us, uh, you, you know, what you have prepared for us. Well, well yeah, this is, uh, the young people might not know who um, Louis Armstrong is. Uh, one of the great sing singers, Satcho, I think they called him. And he wrote a song, A Wonderful World. Mm -hmm. I mean, the world may not look like wonderful right now to them, but it can be. When we get a relationship with our maker, okay. we can have a wonderful world within. So that's, that's the song I was going to just sing a little bit of it. Okay. I see trees are green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright blessed days, the dark scarce nights. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbows, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of the people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies crying. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Nice, beautiful. Yes, I, I think to myself, oh. what a wonderful world. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a good yeah. song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says that at the end. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, for our true uh, group, if you don't know Louis Armstrong, you know, you may want to look up his life sometime. There's been a lot written and said about him lately. Uh, he was actually raised, uh, you know, in the foster family, so to speak, by a white family. And then he, uh, he, he he became the ambassador for music, but also he had a certain style that actually kind of rubbed some of the civil rights leaders wrong. They thought he was too 
you know, acquiescing to being whatever. And there's a lot being written about that lately. He, he had a great life, but uh, I think there's a documentary coming out too that mm -hmm. shows some of the, the, you know, the conflict that he represented for um, as we were moving forward within the civil rights struggle, uh, the, both the good and the, you know, the concern, I'll put it that way, not the bad, but the concern. But all great leaders, all great people, you know, they have their thing. So anyhow, but let's hear, this is a youth night with True, and so we're so glad to have them. So we're going to give them the last word. Uh, Sister Angela Bates and Lillian Bates and, uh, you know, Sister Pearl and also Eric, Brother Eric, the leadership there. Thank you all so much for what you're doing. And uh, to our young scholar there at Carnegie Mellon, thank you, my man, for, you know, being a part of it, sticking around, showing them that, uh, you know, what a, what a good role model looks like. We appreciate you. <laughs> Uh, let's hear from the true, true young people. Any anything, any thoughts, or anything you want to ask of us? Any questions you might have, or any project you're working on, you want to tell us about? Thoughts, questions, projects you might need help with in school. You know, this is the literature part of education. Yeah. How about I think they should write a haiku uh, tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can so help them with that? Can so, yeah, India wants to know if um, we can help them write a haiku if they even know what that is. Right oh, away. yeah, 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 haiku. So that's that's cool. So here's what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is take who has the cell phone? Take out your cell phone. Okay, everybody got cell phones. Everybody got cell phones. Go to Google, look it up, read off the definition to us, and then we can actually you know, write a nice definition? small form. It was actually a Japanese form that used to be written uh, in a particular style, you know, uh, 575. Uh, but also, it was always about nature. But in the 60s and 70s, we changed that up. <laughs> Thanks to people like Sonia Sanchez and others who used the haiku as a form of also writing about revolution. And so uh, haiku is a very, very popular uh, form of writing, uh, you know, short form. But anybody find the uh, definition of it? Isn't it? Um, it says, yeah, it says, a haiku is a short, unrhymed poem that adheres to a specific three line, 17 syllable format. And, and, not, and the 17 syllables are broken up in what? Five, seven, five, right? Five, seven, All right. Five. Okay, cool. So uh, let's, let's, let's try it once. Uh, actually, we just wrote a book of poetry. Uh, yeah, like you can actually. Oh man, I wrote some haikus in my little book of poetry. Do you think you've ever do something about like smoking your tobacco or something? Wait, I have, I have one. Wait, okay. I have a, I have a haiku. Uh, yeah, we okay. Hold on, we all do. How are you spelling that? How are you spelling that? How do you spell uh, haiku? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's spelled H A I K U. Yeah, H A I K U. Oh, okay. H A I K U. H A I K U. They got it right in front of them. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, Brother Dan Snowden, he said he has one. I'm asking him to read his haiku, and then uh, we'll go around after you write, you write yours too. But, Dan, read yours off. Oh, sure. Life, a haiku. That thing we call life is both simple and complex, connecting us all. One more time. Okay. That thing we call life is both simple and complex, connecting us all. Okay. I like it. That thing we connecting call life. Connecting us all. That's right. Oh, connecting. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Oh, see? Isn't that bad? Oh. Yeah. So do something with smoking and truth. Oh, okay. Remember, you need five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. Three and they give you a clue. Clap it out. Okay. Uh, True. True is one. You're doing Him. Stay in it. No, it doesn't have to run. Can someone give them another example while they're thinking of it still? Sure, here's sure. one. Just friends. He watches my gauze dress blowing on the line. 
Okay, say it one more time, Ro. Just friends. He watches my God's dress blowing on the line. Okay. Now, the first one is, you said just friends. Is that five syllables? Mm-hmm. Just, well, haikus can also listen to the pattern. Just mm-hmm. friends. Two. He watches my God's dress. One, two, three, four, five. Blowing on the line. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Five, five seven five five seven five. Mm-hmm. You remember? And that's from the American poet Alexis Rotella. Well, that seemed to go against everything we just got through talking about. But that, <laughs> that's actually a piece. <laughs> that's, you now listen, it says. As with other poetic and literary forms, haiku has evolved over the centuries. While traditional haiku adheres to a specific structure and content requirements, more on that, uh, modern haiku often deviate from these rules to experiment with new formats and explore a new subject matter. Take a look at this 20th century haiku from American poet Alexis Rotella. Hers is just friends, which is two, <laughs> my God's dress, which is four, and then it goes to blowing on the line, which is four. That's a modern haiku. Okay, modern haiku. Okay. Uh, always somebody like her. Yeah, <laughs> just- and we didn't found out the formula. Here she comes. <laughs> They they changed the formula for haiku a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I like uh, the haikus that um, uh, Sonia Sanchez used. She always uses okay. the, you know the traditional formula of five seven five, but uh-huh. she also had very revolutionary kinds of whatever. Yeah. And uh, so I used hers, and I, like I said, I'd have to find my little book there, poetry. But I think I had um, a number of haikus uh, in there. Gwendolyn Brooks yeah. had a few too. Yeah, Gwendolyn Brooks did too. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. She used some. And in fact, a lot of the modern, uh, I mean, the uh, oh, right. of that era used a lot oh, of haiku. That, <laughs> looks like we have some, uh, uh, the two folks done. have written some things down. What did you come up with? Oh, Mr. Eric? Mr. Yes. Eric? <laughs> Y'all want to read it? Who wants to read that one? You got to be close to the microphone, though. Who wants to read it? Yeah, yeah let's go up to that. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. Wait, mine? No, this one up here. Read that one up there. Big tobacco lives. Big tobacco lives. We're not falling for their tricks. We'll win. We will take them down. Okay. One more time. Read it one more time. Here. Let me read it out loud. I'll say Okay, project your voice. You know you got I said, hey, go no Ben. I'm gonna be doing it at the valley bar for boy. Big tobacco lies. We're not falling for their trick. We will take them down. All right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, India. Okay. Um, smoking ruins lungs. Children need to run and play. Stop vaping, kids run. One more time. Smoking ruins lungs. Children need to run and play. Stop vaping. Kids run. Wow. Good, good. That's right. Simple and sweet. Who wrote that one? one? You still working on it? Okay, go ahead. Work on it. Anybody else have one? Oh, here's one. Here's one from um, Gwendolyn Brooks. Smelt, Smelt fishing. In the cold spring night, the smelt are spawning. Sportsmen fevered crowd are yeah, fevered crowd the lake. Wow. Say okay, one more time, because they go so fast, you know, boom. Yeah. It's called smelt fishing. In the cold spring night, the smelt are spawning. Sportsmen fevered crowd the lake. Wow. Okay. That's Gwendolyn Brooks. Okay. This is all new to me, Nate, this high yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. So that was Robert oh, Hayden. Because on my phone, I'm, I pulled something up. It says, you know, the rules for haiku poetry. It says there's no more than 17 syllables. Haiku is composed of only three lines. And typically, typically every first line of haiku has five syllables. The second line has seven and the third has five 
So this is yeah, this that's is a traditional. Uh, Ro was just saying how there's a modern version to it, you know. But yeah, that's that's the typical, and that's the one that I, I've always used. The formula I've always used. But, I never uh, knew yeah. what it meant. I didn't know what it meant. I I never really. Well, heard haiku it. actually evolved out of it. It was a Japanese form of of poetry, okay, and it was yes, about yes. nature most of the time. Uh, it did have that rhyming scheme of five seven five. But uh, in the modern day, uh, when I was uh, you know turned on to haiku, it had to do with people like Sonia Sanchez, Donnell Lee, or Haki Mahabuti. Uh, they used to do a bit uh, Brendan and Brooks uh, Row was just saying they would use haiku, but they were talking about things that related more to you know our culture, you know, that kind of thing, or whatever we were talking about. Okay. It didn't have to just be about black, white, or culture. It could, you know, so it wasn't just about nature, that was the main thing. Uh, but now there's different forms of even of haiku. Uh, you know, and as poetry is involved in writings involved, you know. Uh, we've gotten away from forms a lot. That's why spoken word has exploded because you can just do your own thing. Some of it rhymes, some of it's just, you know, flow. It yeah. flows not necessarily rhyme. I'll see a hand going up with Lillian. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, we have two more young people that are finished with theirs. They have time to share. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. go on and share okay. and then we'll end okay. with those two. We'll end with them so, too. Ben, do you want to go first or Tayana? Just put the microphone oh, close to them, okay? Okay, okay I'll put it close. Okay, Ben. Uh, true is protection, not just for teens and adults. We're all in danger. I like it. Right. One more time. Like that. That's really good. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. One more time. I like that. I'm going to say it one more time. Good. Good good job, ben. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I have mine. Mine is a little bit more. Uh, not big, but mine says, please protect your lungs. Your body is a temple. Learn to take control. Very good. Very good. I need to do a whole bunch of haikus and, and publish a book on it as far as tobacco is concerned. <laughs> hey, listen, let's do this then. That's just fun tonight. So why don't we come on next time? Why don't you do more haikus? Okay, that's and let's take a Wait, what? Is this one over here? Okay. True okay. health to protect. Tobacco, tobacco ruins the lungs. Wait, what? Oh, no, right here. Uh, it has nicotine. Okay. Yeah, one more time. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you turned them all into writers tonight. <laughs> listen, you listen. Turn me listen. into a writer. Tell them <laughs> don't get rid of those, uh, Lillian. Tell them yes. to hold on to them and to create some more. And then what we can do is put together a small little publication of haikus around tobacco <laughs> prevention. Like okay. That. Did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to challenge our uh, poets and and writers that are on the writers workshop to join in with you to do the same thing. So uh, we'll talk to Terry Martinez, who does T Dub yeah. Publishing and asked her if she would be willing to publish our haikus, okay? So I want True to do a, a whole series of them. It would be a true publication. And then you have some guest writers like Lazile, Ro, uh, you know, Nanette, Dr. Snowden, myself. And we will add to, you know, to your, uh, to your publication. But this awesome. will be a true publication. Can you do that? Thank you, yeah. Thank you. Let's yeah. make that happen. Yeah, let's make that happen. Come on. Hey, next time too, when we get together, we're gonna to do what's called a list poem. And this poem is exactly what it sounds like. We'll talk more about that. Where you just do a list of things, but it's just in a very poetic form. And uh, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun form uh, because you can really do a lot. In fact, a lot of our poets on here, they, they pretty much do what we call list poems this time, time to time. So we're gonna, uh, you know, we're mindful of the time because we're always gonna honor, uh, you know, Reverend, um, Chris Thomas and thank him for what he does to make this possible for us. Uh, we come on every Friday night with the Writers Workshop. And the first Friday of every month, we uh, you know, work with the True Group, who are some outstanding young people doing an outstanding job in our community. We want to thank you all for coming on tonight. And we hope that you'll continue to join us. By the way, young folks, you can come on anytime because we're on every Friday night from seven to nine. And uh, but we do thank you for sharing this time with us. Uh, and we hope to see you next month, if not before, okay? God bless everybody. Keep on writing. Or as Brother Chucky Pitts would say, write on, okay? <laughs> see you later, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, y'all.
All right. All right. <laughs> okay.